just leave that in and I'll show you why. I got to get the one that you printed yesterday. I'm going to put some holes in it. I saw it. Absolutely, you can drive as much as you want. Oh, I don't want to. Um, Wayne, the, that is the um, bridge program that we evidently filled out improperly the last time. So okay. we had to fill everything out again and, and sign it. So I just need your signatures, okay? We were, we've already signed it. We'll put it in the mail tomorrow. Uh, Do you have some people I need to sign off on? Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to see the book? Yes, I'd like to get that done so the dates are. How are you, sir? Is this going to go pretty quickly? No. <laughs> no. You're asking for a lot. <laughs> oh, I think it's going to go pretty quickly. I hope so. I think uh, it does. We have to sit around and wait till yep till five. five. Okay. Uh, is there anything else we need to uh, amend the agenda to to do? No, sir. That is the city's. The green and there's a legend on the back. Green is um, updated, and yellow is need additional information. So those are what. The areas of concern are so we can go through those. Stephanie's got some stuff. We've got additional files that are coming your way. Uh, okay, so it, it doesn't like it when you don't click on the same darn computer. It drives me nuts. Have to click there. So when we get there, there's all the files in there by chapter. So we can open them up and show them on the screen. Okay. Will that make it easy? I suppose. I we'll try, see. I try to make it easy for you. Thank you. Hey, match. <laughs> she sent me the note. I said oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Say thank you for taking care of my wife the other night. You're welcome. Anytime. I totally appreciate that. That was anytime, anytime. Today so we good to go? Is the twentieth? I suppose. Man, that's a big book. What you? What, it's so nice and neat, ain't it, Chandra? Mm-hmm. Who did it like that? Did you do that or Steve did that? I did it. Look at you. <laughs> man, man. Oh, do you got long sleeves? Or they all short sleeves? I got long. Because she was long. She said, no, they long fit short sleeves. They long. I got both. So whenever you, uh, I don't know if you're going to check me up. You talking about long or short sleeves? Like um, these? Like this that. One. Yeah. That. Um. I'm going to her house today to get those, but I got the long ones with the short sleeves, and I got the short ones that come on your knees with the long sleeves on me. It might be 
might be some short ones. The long ones are not the long ones. Oh, whatever. I don't know. Just show me what you got. Are we going to speak anything about loss in this right here, or just going to be service strategy? No, this is just service so delivery strategy. Okay. I have no idea. Is there anything that black people see that presentation in the year of loss? Because that's the biggest complaint I keep getting, is they can't see, they can't see it. They can hear it, but they, they don't know, they don't see it. should be able to be released because it was public forum. But he told me no. So. Oh my, you did not show up. leave at five but I'm gonna be running out of here because that, I gotta go to that ball game. My daughter's ball game. I'll take you out there now and let me make sure I'm with you. You gotta okay. be here. I gotta be in here but I gotta eat. I ain't ate lunch yet. But I mean I <laughs> look I got a thing called an app and YouTube and I can control it and listen. <laughs> <laughs> ain't that right Clay? I gotta make sure the outsiders can see it. So if I can see it they can see it. Yeah buddy. <laughs> There was one. I gotta go get it that you didn't, that you missed the other day. Zooming? Are we zooming? Uh huh. Sweet. Right here. I love it when we're zooming. Who is zooming? Who's Gwen? Oh. Well, today's the 21st. I, I signed them all the 20th. It, it is the 20th. Today's the 21st. Today's okay. 20th. Yeah. Tomorrow's the 21st. I keep yes. thinking tomorrow's or today is Friday. <laughs> Today is the 20th. I didn't. He's having serious I, I agree. That's why I didn't do it. Did you see him? You didn't see him last week, did you, hmm. Mr. Billy? Mm -hmm. They've got him on um, oxygen because his oxygen levels are so low that oh, no. he keeps falling out.
Stephanie just sent them like 30 minutes ago. I thought, I thought that uh, you was all happy with whatever, all the stuff was done. She is in a much, 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 much better place. Yesterday after the water meeting, God bless you. God bless. Thank God you. bless. Uh, Dick came to talk to me. He started the conversation over how was my wife, Hama Hama Hama, and he said, "What's going on with uh, SDS? What's going on with Lot?" And uh, I said, "It's not going very well, uh, but we're getting there." He said, "Okay." So then. Five hours later, uh, we're not. Yeah. Five hours later, Dick calls me and says, uh, I'm trying to work this. I said, oh, okay. Uh, he said, uh, I think I'm pushing the rock uphill and it's going okay. okay. Then, two minutes after that, Doug calls me. And he said, all right. I think we have, we're going to be able to make this work. Uh, he said, uh, if this doesn't work today, make no, Dick said, if this doesn't work today, I would suggest that you and Gwen sit with Cynthia and Cora and hammer the rest of it out. I said, okay, that means no uh, legal or management, he said, yes. I said, okay. I said, is there big, huge problems? And he said, no, I just think that uh, uh, you may be able to get it done, which really says Gwen and her daughter and sister have got it done. And I said, okay. So lots of people trying to get us there. I think that's awesome. The, it's going to be right at 62.38. Which is the same thing you've said since. Okay. Is so, that what I responded to Sharon? Can you? Now, did you see the one from somebody else? Uh, long, long, long. And you paid them to teach them. Okay, okay, good. Uh, I've run all the double taxation numbers. I've run every number sideways and backwards and forwards. And guess where it all falls out? 65. 75. 75. Well, you saw what I sent um, Sharon. That was the 7525. And she came back and she said, well, you still need to, uh, you need to go work with the city and give them what they've always had because it's all about perspective. I'm like, well, it's, you have 67,000 people you're responsible to do the right thing for. Not the city. She didn't have a valid argument. All about perception and perspective. I'm ready to send that whole thing out. Send, uh, I, I will send you the one that you can, you can send. Okay, okay. Now, almost and, and there's only second. so few people who understand the technicality of it and even care about what we're talking about. You're almost exactly nobody. Right. But it's going to open. It's going to open Pandora box if you do. Well, you know, Doug, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Doug said to me, he says, Clay, the only thing I am interested in is that we look at it for the eight issues. Coming to the meeting? I said, the, the county manager has written it out using oh, those eight that's what I was and the numbers that go with it. Then he's averaged them all no, out. No, I haven't gotten any notes. He said, oh, I don't know if I've seen that. Yeah, aren't and I supposed said, to get a notice? Well, I thought I we thought had it during the mediation. said, I'll see something tonight here when she joins. And I said, so. Uh, 
Uh, we have those eight things ready to go. There's a tether in that little yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what my issue is. I want to see that. I just want to make sure we've gone through each one of those eight. So, okay. Well, hello, What's up, Chief. Mark? What's up? Yes. You yell my name and I'll walk out. I hear you. That's okay. I was just checking on Zoom. Oh, okay. Yeah, we hear something. Is this uh, some. Uh, are, are we into something that he's. No, he's just coming because it's open to the public. And we're yeah, that's about right. I, yeah, I mean. I'm coming in my capacity as a citizen of Chicago County. Okay. I just didn't know if there was. And the city. Yeah. Or his inside. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if there was uh, one of them that is the ones we're talking about. Nothing to do with it. It's just what well, you're starting to support. support. Okay. I'm sorry? It's just sorry. Oh, oh. <coughs> We always love having you. Thank you. You know Kathy? Not really.
Welcome to the Spalding County Board of Commissioners work session. It is Thursday, October 20th, 2022 at 3 p.m. I'd request that everyone please silence your cell phones and all other electronic devices. At this time, I'd like to ask the county manager to lead us in the invocation and Commissioner Ryan Bolden uh, from District 4 to lead us in the Pledge of the Flag. Thanks, Ross. Father God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your opportunity to serve you in the capacities that we serve. We pray, Lord, that you would guide, lead, and direct us as we walk through our service delivery strategy this afternoon, that we would do what's best for our community and whole. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you would, please join me to pledge our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. Item number four, discuss service delivery strategy outstanding items. Dr. Ledbetter. Thank you. Um, so Stephanie and I are going to walk through this okay. together as um, we have information and we've shared that information with you from our city partners, uh, the issues that they had with our service delivery strategy. And I want make I want to make sure that uh, we cover this in its entirety. Uh, the first thing that they had noted in the document that was sent to us, goodness, I'm sorry, I don't have the date on here, but I, I do have the, the information. I believe it was Thursday of last week yes. was when we received it. Uh, they had uh, an issue with the archivist, uh, specifically section two on the form that's listed. Uh, we, we made those changes to that particular uh, form two uh, and we cleaned that one up. The transportation planner, they had a couple of issues, just uh, gr not grammatical, but um, structural issues with the form, so we cleaned that up. Uh, the new airport, they had some structural issues with the form, so we cleaned that portion of it up. The next issue that they had, which is listed on your, uh, your sheet at your area, is the animal control and shelter, form 2S, needs to be separated. Um, but I think that we had some conversation with each of you separately that indicated that um, that you would very much like to see the form stay intact for animal control and to work with the city to uh, to retain animal control as a county service. Uh, that was my understanding from the discussions that I had with uh, with the board of commissioners and. We would like to share with you what our thoughts are uh, and then get the board to make a decision on how we want to proceed with animal control. In, in fact, one of the conversations that I had with uh, Commissioner uh, Flowers Taylor was to rename that specific form animal control, animal care and management and control. I think that's how it's currently listed in its, in its title. Uh, for the the full scope of how that would be arranged um, miss Stephanie did you have any any thoughts about how we would proceed with that I think we have presented a draft um, IGA that that is animal control and the an animal shelter countywide um, we had because it's kind of gone back and forth as to whether or not they wanted to keep control, animal control or not. Um, I think it makes more sense um, and is, is really the only way that we can truly regulate the, the officers that are actually acting in their capacity as animal control officers and the animals that are actually left at the shelter would be for us to to take on both of those roles and um, as a countywide service I don't believe that it would be something that we should charge per animal for I think that it should just be a countywide service and that we we just handle animal control in the animal shelter for the entire county for the entire county does that include more manpower on our end 
Uh, the city currently has two animal control officers that um, if the county decides and the city agrees to that structure, those officers would be afforded the opportunity to move over to the county for support of our animal control operations. Would there be compensation to them on that? Animal? That would be a discussion that we would have during our loss negotiation. Right. Okay. All right. No, I, the issue was them putting sick animals into our facility. We did not want that to happen. That, was, that was one issue, yes. yes. And, that can, and this controls that, if, yes. this, if we do it. That, yes. that would, Gwen is available now. Awesome. Uh, that, that would actually eliminate that mm -hmm. responsibility from, from anybody. Um, and it wasn't to exclude or detract from anybody working for animal control. It was just that we have been in a position where we've gone back and forth with that negotiation. And um, I, I believe Ms. Gwynn's online now. Ms. Mm -hmm. Gwynn, are you available? Is she muted? Mm -hmm. I think they've stepped out to get the... Uh, yeah, they've uh, stepped out DeAndre. to get right. DeAndre because I've, I've never done this, but she's... Did you it, she is muted. Well, no, she... Hello. Okay. Hey, Miss Gwen, we now can hear you now. Miss um, Gwen, if you have input on the, an, hey, can you hear us? You have us muted. Miss Gwen, we can hear you. I think we're muted. Oh, oh good. I'm okay. Uh -uh. Okay. <laughs> you should. She be. Should be able to hear. Can us. you hear us now, Miss Gwen? Can hear you guys good. All right. Thank you. We were talking about animal con uh, care and control for. Uh, the SDS and how we've gone back and forth with the city in our negotiation for that particular piece, but it's my understanding that we are now back in a position where um, the, the county is going to uh, move forward with both services for the entire county. Is that the way you understand this? and no charge to the city? Uh, no additional charge. I think we can't charge them, um, charge them anything when we don't charge Sunnyside or Peach Hill. Uh, she used our shelter. However, we don't charge them anything when they don't use the shelter. So we don't charge them anything when they don't use the shelter. However, this is just SDS. This is just establishing that, that, is, that is correct. And I do think that that's that's the only way that we can we can't cover every contingency as you saw the other night I mean it was one thing after the other that you that that you guys were coming up with that would need to be addressed before they were able to leave an animal at our shelter and it's we just there's no way we could cover every contingency in an, in an IGA okay so we believe I think the four of us believe this is the way we want to go. How about the city? Do they know anything about what we're doing? So, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay, so I spoke with Commissioner Ward yesterday, yesterday morning, and um, we were talking about this very thing. And she said that one of her concerns was that they had these two employees who will lose their job. And Is that what you're all going to talk about during the I don't think I'm real happy with that, but um, I just think it would be fair. Because yeah, they're not they're currently certified. That's Am I correct in saying that? Yes, I, my understanding is they're not currently certified. And, and, and the reason I came up with this idea was because when someone sold a Dundee Mills or Dundee Lake Park or gave a Dundee Lake Park, there were two people that were working there with us. The, the whatever, and then the landscaping man. And we promised them when they gave us the land that we would allow other people to continue to work. We tried to hire them through the county. We hired them. They didn't have a GED. We gave them I mean, 18 
I did um, mention to Drew, Kelsey, and Jessica that, in my opinion, the the best solution for for animal control was to have a have us have provide that service countywide. Uh, do you foresee any because we're doing this negotiation loss? Would this is going to be a problem in that portion of this? Now that we're talking about like. Like she's mentioning employees compensation how are we going to do that i know that's there but do you anticipate any issues with that i, I don't anticipate any issues no ma'am okay but i mean I'm, I'm in agreement with it it will be a topic of conversation a topic of conversation Correct. No all right uh, and, and i i just want to say and i We agree. Okay. All right. So let's make sure. I'm going to try to make sure we uh, before we move on. Everybody, the four of us agree with the animal uh, animal control and animal shelter. Okay. All right. So, County manager. Um, next up on the list is code enforcement. Um, the and I will read this in its entirety from the city box E of section one should be checked since county provides services in Sunnyside and Orchard Hill. Yes, box of uh, section two should be checked for section three. Remove fines and court fees from city of Griffin funding method. Double taxation uh, equating to amount of code enforcement budget provided for the county general fund would need to be addressed through special service district of loss distribution. Current. Uh, current attached map is okay. So um, we recognize that there are some areas of discussion here, uh, but as far as the service level uh, document form two and the adjoining IGAs, they are fine. So we were moving forward. Uh, number six, it says courts, accountability, superior, juvenile, state court, magistrate, form two S, uh, needs to be provided for these services. I have done a thorough review of Douglas, DeKalb, Clayton, Rockdale, Coweta. None of these other counties list these court services in their SDS. So I do not believe this is a necessary requirement. So I've not added that to our document. Number seven is um, it, it's listed as, or it was listed as state court municipal. This item has been completely resolved and updated inside of our uh, service delivery book. Uh, pub public defender what box. Issue is that? It, it was um, it was mislabeled on the form to Miss Gwen. It stated state court slash municipal and it should have just stated municipal court. And their provision of that municipal court is a higher level of service provided um, within the city limits. It's not, yeah, it's not duplicative. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number eight talks about the public defender. Uh, we have satisfied the requirements under the public defender. Uh, one of the things that we do need from, uh, from the city on this is the justification for the amendment to the SDS. So Stephanie and I will take this away and continue to work this in the background, but we have satisfied the requirements of that, uh, that item. Number nine is GIS, uh, and we have satisfied this one. This item says section one needs to list city of Griffin and the county as service providers under box D. Need to address explanation for duplicative uh, items, which is pursuant to terms of OCGA 367024-1 GIS is not a duplicative service because the city's GIS service provides a higher level of service than the county. Uh, then the countywide base GIS service related to elections, property tax collections and billing, tax appraisal and assessment, among other countywide functions. The city's GIS service provides services related to municipal elections and mapping, including mapping of utility infrastructure within the city limits. Section six of this form 
discuss its solid waste and that has been removed from the form so that's no longer there but we have satisfied the requirement of <coughs> item number nine item number 10 states planning zoning building inspections uh, box E of section one should be checked since county provides services to Sunnyside and Orchard Hill and it should show city of Griffin and county as service providers there's a double taxation that needs to be cured through the proof of user fees accounting for all budgetary expenses in the department and or through special service district of loss distribution. Um, this as Gwen, uh, sorry, as Commissioner Flowers Taylor just indicated is a lost discussion. So we will move that to uh, a future discussion and this is currently satisfied. The requirements of this is currently satisfied in our service delivery um, strategy um, booklet but there are some requirements to obtain the um, city of Griffin's zoning parcels and future land use map for attachment into the document as appendices so I will continue to work to get those items added um, under item number 11 this is 800 megahertz uh, the city of Griffin indicates that form two is okay, but they are not willing to agree to retroactive payment since 2018. They will agree to retroactive payment since July 1st of this year and agree to all other terms within the IGA. There was some uh, consternation among the board members about their unwillingness to pay retroactively in I believe Ms. Gwynn had some comments and I believe a, a few of you here on the board had a few comments about this Question as well. Ask about that we yes. um, and I remember back when, when this all came out about, um, probably stupid question because we obviously don't have it, but was there any communication in writing on this? Because I remember there was documents that were going back and forth when William was around about us trying to seek the reimbursement. And I thought there was a sign off maybe by Kenny or something that we were going to get that. The re they, they'd agree to it. Did we not get anything like that? Um, or did that not happen? My, my recollection is that we were told that an agreement had been reached. Um, I, d I, don't, I don't believe that that agreement had ever been ratified okay. by, by either board. Okay. And the, the position of Ms. O'Connor is that they can't, they, they can't justify back payments in that they don't know how many radios there were between 2018 and July 1st of 2022 and that they don't have any way of knowing. Well, don't we have, don't we know what radios were being used on our during that time? Honestly, Ms. Gwynn, we do not. Uh, we were not in possession of a full inventory until this summer. Um, and kudos to Mike Wyndham in working with uh, the city to pull that inventory together. All of the non-assigned um, radios have been turned in and we now have a full inventory of what's on our system and Mike and Tony, uh, the Spalding County employees are currently watching on a regular basis uh, what radios are activated on the system and they're keeping track of all of the information since this this summer now that's not to say that we don't know what is out there but there was no one that was managing it up until um, June or July of this year Mike Wyndham. He is so me. He. Is Mike, no, he needs to know how many radios he has in our system the last three or four or five years. I don't believe he had ever been asked to to determine that. That that is a fair statement. He had never been asked, but he had also not had a full active working inventory of the system. There, 
there's still potential for negotiation. I, I did ask if um, if there was any anything in the middle that um, they might be willing to pay. That's um, a big gap. I mean, because it's kind of like that was 2018, and then they're willing to do it a couple of months, <laughs> July 1st, 2022. I'm like you. I mean, surely there's some wiggle room in between there. I mean, if we don't have the documents, okay, that we, then we have a hard time justifying it. But, but yet, and still, can, we know it's out there. And you can assume um, pretty safely that whatever was there July of 2022 was also there January exactly. of 2022. Right. So, so, so do we know, do we know where, what the non-emergent rate is going to work? And I say that because those so many places that you know, we're going to be tracking now and the non-emergent would they have been the same places even back then? Not necessarily the same people, but that number would not change the number of emergency, non emergent um, radios that would be seen. Yeah, I think you're asking. So even with that, if, 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 if that's the case, then whatever it is we're going to be charged for them now, unless, you know, if it's the rate of the dollar cheap or whatever, we need to extrapolate that back to 2017. I, I just That goes to that, that wiggle room I'm saying again. I mean, I'm just thinking there, there could be some wiggle room where we can, and maybe you, Stephanie, you know, to find out what's fair of, of how far back we need to go back to get our reimbursement if we if we don't get the full amount. I mean, and that's where, that's where real negotiation begins as far as I'm concerned. So, I mean, you know, we should be able to agreeably come to some terms as far as what's right, as far as what's due us. July 22 is not. Um, if we can't go back to 2018, okay, I get it. Um, 2019, 2020, I mean, for certain. You know, so it's, there's, there's got to be a, a way to do this. And I don't know if that's been discussed with them or not, but I, I would be part, part, I would be, would not be remiss to know that they would not be willing to at least negotiate some of it. A year of it. I have not been... I've just kind of thrown that whole idea uh -huh. out there and have not gotten a response as to to that question um, yet. So I, I don't I don't know if there's if they have a hard line in the sand um, as far as that July 2022 20, date. So when have you spoken to Miss um, Commissioner Wardering about this? I, I did. I did. And, and I did get the sense that that, that was Breaker. One of the things that she did indicate to me was that, you know, if, if they agreed to do that, would this be something that we would allow them to pay it off to us over time? Kind of like what we did with the airport when they had to give us, I don't know, what was it, three or six million dollars to start the project up before? I wouldn't be opposed to that. I mean, right is right. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't think that it would be fair for us to impose um, a penalty against them and not give them some time to make payment against that penalty. And I think that's exactly how the rest of the contracts are written is that if they don't, if we don't make payment to them for IGA uh, issues or if they don't make payments to us, then um, there, there is some wiggle room that we have some grace periods. There, so we yeah, can there make are notification payments. periods and, and time to cure in, in those. Okay. Okay. So we'll put it the, out there. I mean, we'll maybe, put it out there. Maybe what we send to them to basically say, you know, we, we want, you know, um, retro pay X or whatever, you know, whatever year we require based on this number for this many non merged radios that you have now. And, you know, that will allow you to whatever. Pay it, pay it that time, or whatever. But I, I think that's fair for because it's clearly one of those times where 
Okay, you so. Know, you left the radio on mm -hmm. and you keep the service. That's right. So what year are so you, that, what year are you proposing that we, um, that we go retro to? So you've been here going on two years. So my, All right, so you're suggesting um, that we go back to 2021, August, or Ju sorry, July uh, 1st of 2021? 2020. I, you know what, I say 2020 during the, pan I mean, if, the pandemic if, started. Well, yeah, because I'm saying if, if, you, if we do that, then that should give us a trend of what it should have looked like and looking at what the non-emergent phones were. That's what I'm saying. If, that, if the public works guy had one, the public works guy has one now. He would have had All right, so 2020, and you give them the number. We okay. say that that is whatever that number is, we want to do it from 2020, and the number we believe is bonk. All right. Yeah. And that's what, what, what would be the amount that they would be being charged for a year with just a non emergency number? 50, that's all included. 50, 50, he's looking. Bear with me just a minute. I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, it's thirty dollars and seventy nine cents per user device per month. So if we're saying going forward, how many non emergency uh, phones do we say that they have? Hey, hang on, Miss Gwen, I'm I'm pulling that up. Okay. Um, So the back pay plus, it, it, it's going to be right around forty-three grand, Miss Gwen. That, that's for one year. No, ma'am. That's for. Oh, my book's coming apart. So, so that that what would. Are we going to be, what was what we have been charging them forward if we had just accepted that we're just going to charge for not charging? Well, m moving forward, it's uh, it's a moving target. And the moving target is thirty dollars and seventy nine cents per device per month. So it would depend on how many. Yes, ma'am. We we've got the exact number, but again, that target it moves. Change. It changes from month to month based on um, who's in, who's employed with the, the city. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That, that's exactly right. Okay. We all, back in 2020, give, we'll give them the number and the amount, and then we'll allow them to phase in the payment of it uh, over the period of time. I'm looking to make sure we're all, you okay with that, Ms. Quinn? Yes. Okay. All right. Number 13. All right. So number 12. Yep. Excuse me. Uh, fiber optic line to 911 box A should be checked under the same premise as the 800 megahertz IGA. The city provides the services countywide, but county pays for it through contractual agreement with the city. Um, and then funding method for city of Griffin should also include user fees. That has been cured, so that one's green on the sheet. Number 13, uh, information technology box E of section one should be selected showing the city's providing services countywide because of the OSSI CAD services, but also show county as K 
countywide provider for unincorporated areas outside of Sheriff's Department. Um, there's an indication that there needs to be a provision for uh, Section 4, but that provision was not added by the city. Uh, I had some questions here about um, uh, what changes on the form need to be updated specifically around number four. So Stephanie and I will finish that update just to add the fact that the county is a provider for the unincorporated area and the sheriff's the provider for the OSSS CAD system. That's the only option that I see that needs to be added. But if there's another option that you see, Stephanie, I'll be more than happy to entertain that. No, I, that's all right. Okay, the only- The way that the city is indicating this item, it says box E of section wood one should be selected showing the city's providing services countywide because of the OSSI CAD service. No, the city is providing that specifically for the sheriff's department. They are running the fiber over to uh, 911, and they're running it out to justice for the sheriff's department. So, so at no cost to us? No, ma'am, we're, we're paying for it. Okay. So there is not a, um, there's a, not a duplicate or a um, double taxation so, issue here. We are paying for the service. Yeah, That, that is correct, they yes, ma'am. Right, they provide it to waste me. They have to pay for it. Yep. It is not a service in the sense that it's, it's, it's for citizens. Yep. Right. I mean, and we do provide it for the other part of the county, but we pay for it. Yes, ma'am. I, I think from the city's perspective. Yeah, I think the the reason that they did that is simply because it was cleaning up the form so that it indicated that the city was providing the OSSI CAD service for fiber out to both of those facilities. Uh, and, and that's actually how it is physically arranged. And they were just looking for that arrangement to be denoted on the sheet. All right, the only other item that we have for discussion is the three leases for uh, parks, uh, parks and recreation that were sent by Stephanie about an hour or so ago. So I will turn it over to Miss Stephanie to walk us through these leases. Uh, so initially, the, the leases that were provided um, to me by Miss O'Connor, there were there was a document that was an IGA basically, and these apparently were work were were done in in 2020. There was an IGA that was that basically set out what we were doing with Volunteer Park and with City Park. I, I think that 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 IGA and I, I've sent y'all a copy of it about an hour ago is is fine. I didn't have any issues with that agreement and just changing the dates on it um, to reflect. A, a new agreement going forward. I think that one is a 10 year agreement. And um, she, Ms. O'Connor had also provided a lease specifically for Fairmont um, and then another lease that um, I think is probably appropriate for properties that, that the city actually owns the dirt and we are just performing the, the recreation services on those facilities. I don't believe that a lease is appropriate for the Fairmont property. We own that property as tenants in common with the city. Um, so we each own an undivided one half interest. The IGA that I prepared for that just is very simple and um, says that we will provide recreation um, services at that facility. And that's our intent if we ever stopped providing recreation services at that facility, then everything there is going to be owned basically as tenants in common. Any, any equipment that can't be moved without, um, without 
destroying the property basically would be ours because we've paid for it but upgrades that we've made in the gym and the bathrooms all of those 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 improvements that's just the way it works in real property law they're they're ours they're not they're ours being the city and the county they're not just Spalding counties so does that Uh, I think it was ten dollars a year, actually, yeah. and that's just basically so that there is some sort of consideration recited in the document. Um, just because right. to have a valid contract, you have to have an an offer, an acceptance, and consideration. Okay. So we're basically leasing their house. Um, we're not going to call that a lease. We're just going to call this an an okay. intergovernmental agreement with with our okay. co owner. I don't okay. I, I, I don't believe yeah, I, I don't believe it would have been this property was conveyed to, to both entities in nineteen sixty five by the, the um, Griffin Spalding County School System. And even, I, I pulled the deed just because I wanted to be sure that there was no reversionary language in it saying that if we didn't use it for a particular purpose that it would actually go back to the school system. And there is no language in it like that, although I feel certain that the intent um, at the time that this was done was that it would be a park. Yeah, and and I do. I mean, I thought that when I was reading through the the city park and the volunteer park document. I mean, if if there are things that y'all think need to be added now, since that one is a, a about a twelve year old document, if things have changed, I wasn't I wasn't familiar enough with the services that were provided, especially at city park, to know if there was any if there were anything. If there's anything there that needed to be updated. It it just it talked about the skate park and and specifically so given that that was addressed, I didn't think there was anything else that. So there's no other park that's outstanding that we would need to kind of redo. No, while we're, we're just while we're doing this. The rest the rest of them are ours. Okay. So the and volunteer and city are not owned at all. We don't have any ownership interest in them. Okay, let's uh, all talk. Right. About As we discussed Monday night, those were all of the items that we have listed that were uh, needing to be addressed. Uh, we feel like they have been addressed from staff's position, but we would welcome any additional comments, thoughts, or uh, direction that the board would would give us. And if the county manager thinks it's appropriate, I, I kind of think it's a good idea for us to just go through. There, there are there are a lot of these um, these form twos, but I mean I think y'all need to be aware of what what's included in this because it, it's you know I mean Steve has this book that weighs about fifty pounds, and when I had a, my broken shoulder, I couldn't carry it. This is our SDS book. All 620 pages. And and I think it, I mean, seeing that goes to, yeah, Chandra was wonderful with that book. But seeing that goes to the fact that we agree on a heck of a lot of stuff. So the fact that there are these few things that have been sticking points is not to be, I mean, that shouldn't come as a surprise. No, with as many items that we have listed in this document, um, I'm surprised that we don't have more that we have consternation over. Um, kudos this to this contract is ten years, right? It's ten years okay. worth of worth so. of documentation, and kudos to the city for supporting and helping us walk through this journey. And so many of these contracts, these IGAs that are included in here, we're not redoing every IGA. There are IGAs in here that don't expire until. Um, 2045 for okay. and and a lot of them have auto renewal provisions as well so we didn't have to um, to renegotiate everything yeah, it, 
in per the yes ma'am And that was a so, one-time fee, so. Say again? That was a one-time fee. So, so what I was saying is that in terms of park land, the city does offer, quote, unquote, a level of service. But in terms of recreation, they offer nothing. And so I think that the designation, the, the designation should be for an IG So are you talking about are, are you talking about their their passive parks, their pocket parks, and then those that just have playgrounds that, that we don't have anything right. to do with, those within the city limits? Right. right. Well in the agreement it says that um, that the city provides that they provide park services, which they do. But we do as well. But in terms of recreation, we provide all of that. Mm -hmm. And there's Maybe. And I'm saying that because, you know, when you start looking at what, what we think, I know we're not talking about money today, but that's a bad difference that you have to provide park and rent services in us providing park and recreation services. Yes, ma'am. I, I think that there would be a great opportunity for us to bifurcate that contract so that it separates the parks from the recreation in uh, unfortunately, I think we're at the 11th hour and it would take a lot of conversation to understand how to separate those two items. Uh, if you could give us uh, some time, maybe between now and the end of next year to do that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sure. We talked about it just a little bit that uh, the city was fine with the current IGA that it's listing as the archivist. Um, and there were only structural changes to form 2S. Uh, but I do, you weren't on the phone at the time. Uh, I would love to hear more about what your concerns are with the archivist so that we can have discussion around that. We did do a revised IGA to include the um, the curator position at the, museum. at the our legacy museum. That's correct. Yeah, so that we have the joint ar archivist and she is a city employee and then we have added information about the, the curator position a as a county employee that is totally funded by the county. You okay with that, Ms. Gwynn? Hello, sorry. Hey. Um, I, I understood that the, your fund, the funding for the curator is predominantly by us. That's correct. That, that's correct. We're funding the curator 100% and we're uh, funding the archivist 50%. But that, that person never comes to us for anything. We don't, we don't tell them anything. 
we could. I think that's a fair question, um, but I know it won't happen in SDS, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Yes, maybe the county gets some value out of the curator, but to me, not to the extent that we're paying for it. We and, really don't have any oversight. And and I do think, even though we don't have oversight for her as uh, an employee, I, I do think that we could we could take a more active role in the archives if we so choose. Okay. Archive, that's all of my questions. I don't think we're just going to have to ask Who is that person, uh, should I say supervised under? Is that, who supervises that person? I'm not sure who her direct report yeah. would be, but she's employed by the city by manager. The city. We just funded 50%. Yes. We do. And they, they cover, um, just, just like with the airport director, it's this, the same type of thing. They, okay. under their personnel policy right. and benefits. Um. Okay. All right, you know, so if... You no, know, back when I was there, it was uh, community development or planning development. Yeah, I think... That it, was I her think, direct uh, report. I think... I don't know if that's still true. I would assume so. Yeah, I would too. All right, with the uh, boards, okay, I'd like to go through all of our Form 2s. And if you've got a question on any of them, no, I'm, I'm just going to read the, the title. And okay. if you've got a question on any of them, oh. please speak up, and that way okay. we can walk through it per the county attorney's direction. And, and I think you can just say we have an IGA. Yes. Okay. Um, administration. Archivist, we have an IGA for archivist. It's a it's in draft form. The what uh, the county attorney just described. Transportation planner, we have an IGA. It's automatic renewal. Airport six alpha two, we have an IGA that expires June thirtieth of twenty twenty three. So we will quickly be jumping on that uh, right after the first of the year. Uh, the new airport. The IGA expires December 31st, 2030 with an MOA between all parties and a bond referendum IGA. Uh, animal care and control, we just had a discussion about that. We will put the draft IGA back in. Uh, code enforcement, um, code enforcement has service delivery map that separates the service delivery areas between the city and the county. There's an IGA with uh, Orchard Hill that's automatic renewal and an IGA with Sunnyside with an automatic renewal. Juvenile probation, there's an IGA that expires December 31st, 2025. Adult probation, uh, the IGA expires December 31st, 2025. Coroner, municipal court, uh, public defender, uh, there's a contract with Jukes Law Firm uh, for juvenile court that expires June 30th, 2023. There's a contract with Jukes Law Firm LLC for state court expiring June 30th, 2023. City of Griffin contract with Sullivan and Ogletree expiring June 30th, 2016, but it has an automatic renewal, so it's still in effect. Uh, Graphical Interface Services, GIS, we're contracted with uh, Brian Haynes to take care of that for us. Planning, zoning, and building inspection. Uh, zoning map for Spalding County. Parcels map for Spalding County. Future land use map for Spalding County. Uh, zoning map for the city of Griffin. We need to put that into the document. Parcels map with the city of Griffin. We need to put that into the document. Future land use map with the city of Griffin. We need to put that into the document. Emergency. And some of these maps, I, the reason that we don't have them here available is that um, Mr. Haynes has been on vacation. On vacation so. okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was not to poke anybody. He, he was away last week for vacation. Uh, emergency communications E911, 800 megahertz radios. We will make the changes that the board just directed as a draft IGA with the city of Griffin. Fiber optic line to 911. There's an IGA with the city of Griffin through June 30th of 2026. Information technology, the IGA expires June 30th, 2026. Emergency Management Agency and Homeland Security. 
uh, fire mutual aid. There's a Spalding County statewide IGA expires September 30th, 2024 with a five year renewal option. The city of Griffin uh, statewide IGA expires March 1st, 2024 with a four year renewable option. The city of Orchard Hill statewide uh, IGA expires March 1st, 2024 with a four year renewable option. City of Sunnyside statewide IGA expires March 1, 2024 with a four year renewable option. In Spalding County, City of Griffin automatic response IGA, which expires September 30th, 2069. There's a form two for fire protection. Spalding County, City of Griffin automatic response IGA expires September 30th, 2069. All right. Yes, ma'am. Wellstar is not a government, so it would not. We would not have an IGA with them. But isn't it part of our responsibility to provide emergency, uh, not emergency services, but ambulance services? No, ma'am. Uh, it's not a mandated. No, ma'am. It's not a mandated service for fire or emergency services in the state of Georgia. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, corporate extension. There is an agreement annually renewable until rescinded. Uh, health and Human Services, Indigent Medical Care, uh, State Law OCGA 3181 Hospital Care for Indigent Program to be administered by the Department of Community Health is listed in our SDS. Um, uh, Ms. Gwynn also indicated that she would like to see our contract with Wellstar returned back to our SDS since Wellstar provides indigent care within our community. Uh, so that will be added. Uh, Griffin Spalding County Land Bank Authority amended and restated interlocal cooperative agreement to establish the Griffin Spalding County Land Bank Authority is pending. So that uh, that will be placed in. Um, so what we have, what what Miss O'Connor and I had discussed and and decided was the appropriate action to take with the Land Bank Authority um, was because, given the fact that we are we're unable to to get something done prior to the end of this month with the land bank and also given the the fact that I, I need to come back to you guys and talk a little bit more about what your direction for for Dr. Ledbetter and I was because I don't think we can actually do exactly what y'all were wanting us to do we can't make the changes that you wanted us to make and then and not be subject to the 2012 Georgia Land Bank Act. Um, so what, what Ms. O'Connor and I had talked about doing was we have an, a current interlocal agreement that has not been terminated or revoked. That's the, the agreement that we should include for SDS. And then continue to work the LBA so that we can make the correct adjustments to the IGA moving forward. And, and not, I mean, not drag our feet on that. That that issue needs to be addressed. But I, I think our position, the city's position was was clear in that we want to make these changes and we want to be subject to the 2012 Act. Ours was a little muddier in that, and I, I think some of that had to do with the fact that you know Mr. Galloway wants us to he he wants the properties that are currently under contract. To, to be taken care of before any changes are made. I'm not sure that we that, that there was a full understanding by all of us, but I mean that that's going to take a long time. And that was like a it was over 100 properties, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and or something like that. And it, yeah, it, it could take years um, oh, for no. that to happen. Okay. I don't and I don't know that you want to wait that long to make the changes about things like adding the people that you talked about adding to that board so so i think we we're going to have to revisit that issue and um i mean miss o'connor and i will will work together to make it work but if we're going to change things like staggering the terms which i strongly suggest as something that's that's a necessity there yeah. then um we're going to have to be subject to the 2012 act so is this something we probably should maybe say by the end of 2023 or something that we have more we're further along yes uh, and 2023 needs yes to be. but in that 
but we also are going to have to resume i would i think our funding of the land bank and okay. and allow them that flexibility to go ahead and hire that right. full-time executive okay. director all of these things that we you know we have to do in in concert with the city so it, it's really us and the city that make these decisions for the land bank even though you would want their input because they're the boots on the ground right. they're not they're not even required to sign the agreement okay uh, Griffin Spalding Business and Tourism Association the IGA with the city of Griffin expires April 30th 2066 uh, Griffin Spalding Development Authority Downtown Development Authority Griffin Spalding Hospital Authority the resolution creating the hospital authority and tenant well star agreement is listed in our SDS here uh, under law enforcement it's City of Griffin Police Correctional Institute the Georgia Department of Corrections in Spalding County uh, that is our state contract with the Department of Corrections uh, Griffin Spalding law enforcement firing range the IGA expires June 30th 2063 with 90 day fiscal year termination option uh, next up is the detention center jail services inmate housing the MOU with automatic renewal jail services agreement expiring December 31st 2050 our inmate work detail the IGA with the city of Griffin expires June 30th of 2020 with one year extension option so this one is expired but there is an uh, there is automatic renewal on this one uh, there is an IGA with Spalding County Board of Education which expires June 8 2022 with a one year extension what option is, yes ma'am Uh, you're talking about the jail contract between the county and the city? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is there something like that? I did not say that. Yes, ma'am. The jail services because agreement. They have their own court. Yes, ma'am. The jail. No, no, I'm, I'm here. Uh, yes, ma'am. The jail services agreement is listed. Um, and it expires December 31st of 2050. Uh, do you mind bringing that up, Miss Kathy? Hold on a second. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Tab 35. Which one is it? It's going to be under law enforcement. And I'm have to close this. Oh, where'd you okay, go? Okay, I just didn't see it when I was going through the book. So when you started talking okay. about all about the law enforcement, I was like, Yes, ma'am, we do. There, there is a charge for um, the stay. Okay, which one? Okay, stay? sorry. No, I just don't put it there. Law okay, enforcement. It's Let's under see. law enforcement. Number ten, Kathy. Law enforcement. Okay. Okay, and if you'll slide down. Keep coming. To the agreement. That's in my work details. Yeah, that's so in my work details. That's not that one. It should be the next one. Okay. That's uh, for education. See. Yeah, that's yep, in, okay. more inmates. So, and there's probably going to be an inmate work detail with Orchard Hill after this. So, just keep on going down. We're looking, Ms. Gwynn, so we can make sure that we've got it in here. Yeah, and that's the Orchard Hill inmate work detail, so keep moving. So jail services was not that's in the, the book. Range. There it is. You keep coming? Yeah. Uh, keep coming down just a little bit more. So, Commissioner Flowers Taylor, it's an MOU 
and it states that the city of Griffin shall pay $40 per day per inmate incarcerated by the Griffin Police Department. Said payment shall constitute full and complete payment for the feeding and housing of inmates and no additional payment or per diem uh, charge shall be imposed except as specified in this memorandum of understatement, un understanding. Payment shall be made within 30 days of invoice. So it, it is in there, yes ma'am. Oh, you're muted, Miss Gwen. Yeah, she's muted it. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. It's in the next uh, paragraph. So the next paragraph okay. says the city shall be responsible for the payment of necessary outside medical care costs for city inmates. If the city inmate requires scheduled or non-emergency outside medical care, which costs more than $100, the sheriff or his designee will contact the city so that the city may decide what action to take. And at the very bottom there, it says there will be no charge other than the $40 daily fee for inmates who receive in-house medical care and prescriptions. Okay. So it's only... All right, thank you. Yeah, it's only um, emergency or non-emergency outside medical care in excess of $100 that, that we invoice okay. the city for. Okay. Uh, next up is inmate work detail. IGA with the city of Griffin expires. Oh, sorry, please forgive me. We had already covered that one. Uh, the next form two is for the sheriff. Uh, the next under library is library services. The next is parks and recreation. Uh, the IGA with the city of Griffin for recreational services expires January 16, 2046. And we just talked about uh, the need to do a bifurcation between parks and recreation for that. Uh, the City of Griffin lease of property agreement for recreational purposes expiring August 31, 2045. We talked about that as well. We will make those changes and add the, uh, the leases that we just discussed that Stephanie provided us about an hour or so ago. Uh, public works, city garage, uh, collection centers, the addendum to summary of the services arrangement is listed in here under a collection center. Uh, curbside solid waste disposal, the IGA expires November 20th, 2056. Under public works, there's an addendum to the summary of services arrangement. There's also uh, our T-SPLOST IGA with the City of Griffin, which expires June 8th, 2071. The IGA with the City of Orchard Hill with automatic uh, renewal. The IGA for um, inmate work detail with Orchard Hill. This was the draft, but I believe we now have that finalized because we did receive the document back from Orchard Hill it's signed for the work that our inmate crew does on the uh, public right-of-ways. Uh, and then we've got our service delivery map uh, indicated in our service delivery strategy. Uh, road maintenance agreement. Again, we've got the t blast IGA with the City of Griffin, which expires June 8, 2071 in our service delivery map. We've got our street lighting. Under taxes, we have ad valorem tax distribution of revenue, appraisal and assessment, uh, tax and billing collections. Uh, and under that, we have an IGA with the city of Griffin, which expires June 30th, 2049. The IGA with the city of Griffin to collect taxes expiring December 31st, 2050. And the IGA with the city of Orchard Hill, which expires December 31st, 2050. Under voter registration and elections, uh, we have a City of Griffin agreement, which expires July 9, 2062. City of Orchard Hill agreement, which expires July 9, 2062. And we now have a draft with the City of Sunnyside um, because we have not had an IGA with them. And there's uh, no one that can really sign that right now. So, and we, it may become a moot point if they decide to turn in their charter. Uh, under water, sewer, and storm water, uh, under the sewer section, there, there is an IGA with the Spalding County Water and Sewerage Facilities Authority. 
uh, through December 31st, 2025 with a service delivery map. Underwater, there is an IGA with the City of Griffin, which expires December 31st, 2045 with a service delivery map. And then we have uh, stormwater as our final form two. I have a stupid question to ask. These contracts that are 20 dated 2071 and 2062, what was the intent there? Why, why, why so long now? What was the intent? I mean, there's nobody here that's going to be, I mean, I'm just kind of wondering what, what was the mindset there? Commissioner don't these Johnson, things need to be at least every 10, 15 years? 20 at the latest? Mm -hmm. longest? I mean, I think that park and rec is going to be park and rec. The changes See, occur that's, anything. That should always be park line plan. So in that instance, I, I would think, you know, 50 years is about as far as you want to go. I'm just saying, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just thinking that's a very long time for any contract. And, yeah. and, and I think back at the time that most of these were, were executed, they just didn't want to deal with it. Exactly. For That's what it years. tells me too. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure it's out there. And, and the majority of our contracts do have out clauses so that we can terminate. Mm -hmm. um, and that, yeah, that makes that makes sense. It, it, it does make sense because if we get them. to a point, uh, as Commissioner Flowers Taylor indicated earlier, that she's looking for a bifurcation between the parks and the recreation, uh, it, it would require us to work through the details while we had one contract in play and then once we get that new contract in place we can bring it back and have a discussion and, and move it forward with an extended period of time so that we don't have to open the contract up again. but as we know contracts take two people it does so i mean if you got one person that wants to one person the other the other than doesn't then you're stuck <laughs> yes it does okay so let's make sure we're clear that's what contracts are legal documents signed by more than one person Okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk about where we are and what we're going to do at 5 o'clock. Okay, we have a number of things that we say we're going to add, change, and do everything else. Are we just going to focus on those three items that we're making changes to? So, so in, in my opinion, what you're going to be doing is approving the service delivery um, strategy documents in their entirety with the, the those three IGAs based on the revisions that have been made. Based on the revisions that were made during the workshop on October the 20th as directed to... Is it the 20th? It is. To the county attorney and the county manager. And then we can put that back in play and we can and, execute it. Yeah, and I, I'm, you know, as far as the Honestly, I've just done the revisions as we've been sitting here to animal control and animal shelter. I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll change the name of it to whatever we want to call it, but I don't think that there's anything objectionable in it after we take out that fee structure. Um, I just did a $10 consideration. Um, 800 megahertz, I think, is going to be the harder, the harder um, mm -hmm. conversation. The issue for us is we know what we want to say. But what the city is going to do is a different issue. Right. So at 5 o'clock, we're going to we make sure we say the right words that we're approving contingent upon or whatever the guidance we've passed you out, we've passed today to you too. I think we can do that. I do too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else on... Uh, Ms. Gwynn, have you got any comments? I'm getting ready to adjourn. Ms. Gwynn is adjourned there. Okay. No, uh, no she's hung up. She's gone. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Johnson? I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your hand. We're adjourned till 5 o'clock.